Have you ever read the back of a Q-tip box? Caution, do not enter the ear canal. <laughs> what is this thing for, if not that? I have no idea. So what does that have to do with anything? Well, it kind of has something to do with my 3D printer. And so if you read the instructions on any 3D printer, it'll say, never leave unattended while printing. And that's pretty much impossible. Uh, I'm routinely printing things that are 20, 48 hours. It's, it's ridiculous. And so you're going to leave it unattended. You may be in the house, but you're not going to be watching this thing the whole time. So anyway, um, I couldn't find any controllers that were commercially available that had all the features I wanted. So I designed and built this. And that's what we're going to cover in this video. So this is a relay module that you can buy on eBay or Amazon. They're pretty ubiquitous, um, but there's a couple of different designs, um, and this is the version that I like. Um, if you can see here down, there's four pins for input air here on the bottom. So channel one, VREF, DC minus, and DC plus. And we're going to get into those in a second, but this is uh, this design, in my opinion, provides better electrical isolation than some of the other options that are out there. So here's another version, and you can see in this version there's only three input pins. There's a DC plus and a DC minus, and then you have this dip switch, which configures whether the triggering signal is either high or low. And so essentially, uh, this input is being used as a comparator either against the plus or the minus to know when to trigger this relay and so um, bottom line is this is a weaker design in my opinion so I I prefer these so this is the one I'm gonna go with this one's a bit overkill it's 30 amps um, I think my 3d printer only can pull about 8 amps total in at 120 volt AC and so this is probably overkill but yeah, that's how I roll. So this is the smoke detector I'm going to use for this project. If you're not already familiar, there are two types of smoke detectors currently available. The ionization type that we've been using for decades and this newer photoelectric version. And so these photoelectric ones use uh, light. Uh, I think technically under the hood they could probably use infrared, ultraviolet, or visible light. I'm not sure which one this uses, but nevertheless, um, they're supposedly more sensitive to smoldering fires um, and so in my opinion might be better for this application. I think that a fire started probably by the a 3D printer is going to smolder quite a bit before it really takes off. So here in North America pretty much all wired smoke detectors are going to be color coded like this. We're going to have three wires, a black and a white one, bring in AC and so the black is the AC hot and the white is the AC neutral and then there's this orange wire and the orange wire is called the interconnect and so when this smoke detector goes off it actually sends a 9 volt DC signal across these two wires the orange and the white and so the orange is positive and the neutral is negative negative. and so the idea there is that all of the smoke detectors in your house actually share these two wires and so that the other smoke detectors will be listening for that 9 volt DC signal and when they, they see it, or they too will trigger. And so the idea is that all the smoke detectors in your house go off at the same time. And so the example is if they're, you're sleeping upstairs and in the basement a fire starts, the smoke detector near your bedroom will go off and you'll get up and go investigate to, to find out where the fire is. And I think most smoke detectors have some type of LED lighting code to indicate which smoke detector was the origin of the alert. And so you could walk around your house looking at each of the uh, smoke detectors and know, oh, it was the one in the basement that triggered uh, this alert. And so, so what we're going to do is we're going to use this 9-volt signal, uh, DC signal, to trigger one of our relays and thus uh, essentially shut off power to our 3D printer. So let's try to breadboard this thing up before we go any further to make sure it works the way we want. Um, so I've taken the three relay modules here and I've attached it to this blue uh, 3D printed uh, holder and it's going to be DIN rail mounted. So that's what this blue thing is. You can kind of ignore it. There's one on this side that's not finished. Um, but what I have here is the breadboard, which has 5 volt DC coming in, and then it's being distributed to each of the relay modules. 
And so what's nice about these modules is that they have good electrical isolation between the power coming in to drive the relay itself and the uh, logic signal that comes from the Raspberry Pi. Uh, and so that's what this little black chip here is. It's an uh, optocoupler. And so usually on an Arduino or a Raspberry Pi, these 5 volt logic signals don't have very much current. So you wouldn't want to try to drive these drivers with that signal. Uh, and so it's good practice to have a separate source of power. Uh, and so that's what's happening here. So here I've added two wires, one to channel 1 and one to VREF, and so this will be the 5 volt logic signal that will trigger this relay. Um, and I've attached it to this momentary button here on the um, breadboard. So I just wanted to clarify something here. Um, I mentioned the importance of electrical isolation between the power that's being used to drive the relay coils and the power that's triggering them. And then here in this section of the video with the breadboard, I'm actually violating that tenant for demonstration purposes. And so I'm using the same five volts that's coming into the breadboard to both power the relay coils and then trigger them. And so just know that uh, at least in, in the final product, for the signals that come to these two relays from the smoke detector and the Raspberry Pi, that those are actually different power sources. And so that's really the focus of, of the electrical isolation. We want the electronics in our controller to be isolated from the stuff in the smoke detector and the Raspberry Pi so that problems in one don't propagate to the other and vice versa. And so you can see when I press it, this blue LED turns on, indicating that relay is on. And when I let off, it turns off. And so now we're going to add some wires to make this latching. Okay, so I've added another breadboard here. And on this one, I'm bringing in two wires, and this is a 9-volt DC. And so this breadboard is going to simulate our smoke detector. And we're going to use that signal to drive this relay. And... Um, What's important to know is that you, you should probably look up the data sheet to, to the optocoupler on your relay module and find out what its maximum rated current is. And so since we're using 9 volts here instead of the 5 volts that this was designed for, we're going to add some resistors to make sure that that current stays in the sweet spot for that optocoupler and we don't blow it up. And so in my case, I think uh, I determined I need about 1,000 ohms. And so I had two 500 ohm resistors here, so I put them in series, and so that's what that is. And so now when we press the button, this relay comes on. Um, and so a detail about uh, smoke detectors is when they go off, the, the signal isn't constant. It basically pulses. I think it's competing with current for the actual the noise maker uh, in the circuit. And so there's a little bit of a voltage drop. And so people have posted uh, YouTube videos of the, the waveforms from the oscilloscope. And so it's basically an intermittent signal like this. And the duration of that is um, variable. And so that's something we have to take into account in this circuit. So I've added three wires and changed the behavior of this system. So now when I press the button, the first relay comes on, but when I let go of the button, it actually stays on. So this relay is now latched, and its power is being uh, passed through the normally closed contact of this relay. And so if we change the state of this relay, the power to this relay will go off. And so we're going to simulate the smoke detector sending us a 9-volt signal, and the second relay comes on, and this one goes off. And so that's essentially what we're looking for. Uh, no matter how intermittent or quick that signal is. So just to clarify here, um, you can go online and look up the data sheet for the relay that you're interested in using, and then find in it um, uh, two specs. They're usually called on time or off time, or they could be called uh, operation time and release time. There's a couple of lexical variants, but it's the same thing. It's basically telling you how fast the mechanical switch can turn on and thus turn off. And so here for this one, this is the relay that I'm using. It's 10 millisecond on time max. And so that's uh, plenty fast, I think, for this application. Uh, this latching relay turns off and stays off. The only thing that can bring this relay back online is a human coming to press this button. And that's what we're looking for. So here's a schematic of this circuit, uh, probably a bit easier to follow in, in a diagram. So here's the circuit fully wired up. So we have the latching relay, the smoke detector relay, and then this relay is going to be controlled by the Raspberry Pi. 
More specifically, it'll be controlled by Octoprint through the Raspberry Pi, and it gives the final say as to whether this relay is on or off. And this relay is sending, it's actually switching AC that goes directly to the 3D printer. Um, so everything, all the wires you see here are DC, and then uh, what will be connected to these two wire prongs here is the, the line for the AC. Um, and so when this relay is on, the 3D printer has power. And so let's go through this. So here we turn on the power to the latching relay and uh, the smoke detector relay lays dormant waiting for a signal from the smoke detector should it ever come. And then this uh, Raspberry Pi relay just waits for a signal from Octoprint. And so we're gonna simulate that here. And now this relay comes on and it allows power to pass to trigger this relay. And so this, this relay is now uh, on and so power is going out to the 3D printer, AC power. And so uh, in the event that smoke is ever detected, we'll get the 9 volt signal. It turns off the latching uh, relay, which kills power to this uh, uh, mains relay. And so the, here you can see the blue light is still on and so we're still getting the signal from the Raspberry Pi. It's giving a thumbs up, yeah, turn on the power, but it's been vetoed by what went on in the uh, smoke detection part of the circuit. And so the only way to restore power is for a human to come here and press this to turn back on the latching relay. And something good to note here is if a smoke detection signal comes, but it's not intermittent or it's still occurring when a human comes to press this button, you'll see that it's now not latching. It's now intermittent. And the moment you let go of that button, all of the relays go off. So it's kind of important to know that that's the behavior of the circuit. Um, so anyway, let's restore power. We have power going out to the 3D printer. And now uh, we've come to the end of the print and uh, Octoprint can now give a signal to let's turn off the AC to the 3D printer because we don't want power, you know, the machine to be sitting there idling for hours. So let's drop that signal and then this main relay goes off. So that's pretty much the behavior we were designing for and that's what we've got. So this is some acrylic rod I picked up at a hobby store. This is 1 8 inch diameter and I'm going to use it as a light pipe. So this stuff has pretty nice properties and it very much like fiber optic cable. It will propagate light. <laughs> well, not very efficiently, but nevertheless, I'm going to use it to bring these LED lights to the outside of my enclosure so that uh, I don't have to wire any more LEDs. All right, so here we are in Fusion 360. So I needed to design uh, an enclosure for this thing. Uh, I didn't want to buy a steel box or something, so I thought I'd design it here in Fusion and then 3D print it. And so this is sort of what I came up with. Um, let's get rid of this top here. Uh, so it's a two-piece design. Uh, these holes are all for mounting. Uh, it'll be DIN rails to hold the components, and then there's some through holes for wires to come in and out. And then on the top here, uh, there's this power meter, uh, which will display some stuff about the power consumption of the 3D printer. And then uh, there's this momentary switch, which is the, the main switch. So here are the main components. Um, a little hard. Uh, excuse. This is this is for the light pipes. This little yellow thing is sitting on top of those three relays, uh, which are modeled here. And then this is that main relay switching the AC. And inside here, these are two uh, actually Meanwell power supplies. So they take AC and make DC, five volts, and they're three amps. Uh, basically, for Raspberry Pi, they kind of recommend you have two and a half to three amps. Uh, of current so I decided to dedicate one of these to the Raspberry Pi and then the other one will drive the relays and the fan uh, that will be attached to this uh, Raspberry Pi and so uh, these power supplies and the Raspberry Pi are going to be mounted on DIN rail and um, it's pretty much the layout here so here it is in real life pretty much with the exception of this guy not being glued down yet. Um, we have trap nuts holding most of the uh, 
DIN rail down, and DC bus, AC bus, relays, power supplies, and a Raspberry Pi. So here's a quick demo of the final product. Um, I think you guys get the feature set. Uh, I don't want to repeat myself too much here. Um, perhaps you can see here, I tried to do embossed letters and then use paint pen. Uh, yeah, it kind of worked. It's a little muddy, but not too bad. I really like the light pipes. They work pretty well. Um, so if we press the button up here, we'll see the latching relay turns on and so that uh, the blue indicator light is pretty clear. And so if I go into uh, Octoprint and uh, turn that relay on remotely, it should turn on power to the uh, 3D printer. All right, so now you can hear the power coming on. That's the main fan to the 3D printer itself. And so now if we grab the uh, smoke detector and hit the test button here, we should trigger this relay and that should kill power to the of the 3D printer, so. Yikes, loud. Um, so that's pretty much as we expect. And so now the only way to restore power is for a human to come to press that button. This latching relay enforces the policy that only humans can reset this uh, uh, machine. So that's pretty much what we wanted. Um, I guess uh, critiques for this thing. <laughs> Um, I think my biggest critique is that it's kind of big, you know, it's not, it's not ridiculous, but it's kind of large. Um, I think, uh, taking a more serious pass at this, I would try to make a, make a printed circuit board to replace these three relays. We'd still have the main relay, uh, that switches the AC, but these three relays could easily be replaced with two MOSFETs and a JFET. Basically shrink every, all the logic down onto the board, uh, probably provide two uh, optocouplers for the input signals. Basically, you could just miniaturize this whole thing. You'd still need power supplies. Anyway, uh, maybe you find it interesting. Maybe you want to build you one yourself. Uh, obviously, be careful. It's AC power. You don't want to kill yourself with that, and you don't want to screw up and make a bigger fire hazard than the one you already imported into your house, which is your 3D printer. So, anyway... Thanks for watching.